Hi everyone, I'm Vicki at Creative Notions. Today we're going to make hexagons, both by hand and by machine. So stay tuned and we're going to have a lot of creative fun. Before we get started on our hexagons, I wanna show you our February subscription bag. We do subscription boxes for quilters and every month we usually ship in a drawstring bag. But this month we chose to ship in a project bag for our customers. It's a really nice mesh bag with a nice zipper on it and you can keep all of your projects in there or at least one at a time. Also in our bag this month, we have this beautiful fabric from Sandy Gervais for Riley Blake fabrics and we'll go through it in just a minute. We've included a beautiful pattern that uses hexagons to make a table runner, a square pillow, and a round pillow. And the templates, both templates, to make those along with a hundred card stock uh, paper templates to go with them. And if you're if you're worried about making hexagons, it's really not hard. We'll do it together and you'll see how easy it is. We have a nice recipe and this is one of our family recipes we've had around for a long time. Not sure where we got it, but it's maraschino cherry cookies. And then we have a bear paw block of the month, which is a pattern correction. It's not the pattern that was corrected, but rather just the picture. Um, the fabrics were transposed somehow. And then we have a beautiful chain link pattern that looks beautiful in these fabrics that look so much like spring. And we also have some quilting shortcuts, tips and tricks, and this gives you a layout of how to cut your fat quarters to make the most out of them for this project. And we have some applique glue from Jill Lilly. She is just an amazing lady and does beautiful fabric designs. This glue can be used for so many different things. We're going to use it today for our hexagons and you know, if you're in a hurry or you just don't want to use pins, you can use this to baste your quilt um, borders, or not borders, but your binding, and it works really well. And if you just like put little teeny drops on and then hit it with your iron, it dries it, and it stays put, and it washes out, it's water soluble. So it's a really nice thing to have. We also included this little treat of spun sugar or cotton candy, however. We just sent out our February subscription bag and in it, we had some hexagon templates. And there were two templates, a smaller one that's two inch and a two and a half inch template and the corresponding um, cardboard pieces that go with it. And I've never seen so many people be afraid of hexagons. It's not like it's the boogeyman. I promise they're really simple. So join me while we make some hexagons. And of course, at the end of this video, if you really can't do it, buy a cheater panel and just quilt around it. It's beautiful too. But let's get started. You're going to see how easy it is. We're gonna do it by hand. And then we're also going to do it by sewing machines. So there's two different ways that we're going to try it. And there are different ways of doing um, the hexagons by hand. So hopefully I will show you a couple of ways that you'll want to try. And you'll want to be able to make either our table runner or one of our pillows right here in this pattern. And that's our goal for today. So gather your things if you'd like to quilt along with me and um, get rid of your fear, and it's gonna be fun. So let's do this. Okay, let's get started making hexagons. I've gone ahead and cut out hexagons, and I'll show you how to do that out of a strip of fabric. But for right now, I've got all of these hexagons that I wanna make into 
grandmother's flower garden. Aren't these the cutest? They are so fun. And the way the pattern is, we've got the same color center on all of these. So I've gone ahead and made a bunch of these up. And um, we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how to make one of these cute flowers. Now, if the only thing you want to do is make this for a coaster or for a mug rug or whatever like that, it's not that hard to do. And I'll show you how to do that. But we'll set these aside for now. And I'm going to use black thread so that I can show you how to do this. There are several different ways to make hexagons. So get rid of your fear because it's not that hard, I promise. Okay, there are, there's a way that you can use starch and paint the starch on and it folds, it will fold these edges over nicely and they will stay. That's not the method we're going to use today. I have used the method where you fold these over and then you take your wonder clip and you just, I have to pick it up, and then you just clip it like this and then you just go around all the way around and you just do your clip and then that, that makes sure that you have about a quarter of an inch all the way around your cardboard. Um, you need the cardboards, trust me. I mean, some people do like to use freezer paper because you can cut out your, well, see, it's getting a little narrow right here, but it's still doable. And then this one, and I can use my last clip. And then what I would do is just sew by hand right here. But since that takes extra time, I don't have that kind of time, and I like to work on these when I'm riding in the car or in the airplane, which has been a long time. It's time for a vacation. But anyway, so here you have your two pieces, and we've given you some applique glue from Jill Ellie Studio. You can use this kind of glue, and it's, it's great. It's water-soluble, and then I just take just a little dab. You don't really need much at all, not, not even a big drop, just a little bit and I'll once I get it started I'll show you just okay just a drop and it's not really colored so you can see but that's probably a generous amount you really don't need that much and I've just done a, dri a drop right in each in the center of each side and then I flip it over and put it right on the hexagon and look it's already ready for me to sew and the water the if you ever wash it it'll come out but it's not a problem now we're going to remove these papers later after we sew them together um, if you wanted to you could do another drop of glue but you don't really have to now the first thing you do to sew it is just fold this over not even that hard, just fold it over and then fold over the next side and it automatically makes a mitered corner because of the shape of the hexagon. And then just tie a knot in your thread, just do a little stitch and then one more to just hold it in place. And it doesn't have to be pretty because nobody's ever going to see it. And then go to the next side. You've got this folded over and flat. And then just use your fingernails. Mine are painted like Easter eggs today. But just fold it and to do two stitches. Like that. And keep going around. We'll do this one and then we'll do one more so that you can see and give it a try. It's not hard, I promise, not hard. If you don't like doing handwork, then I will show you in a minute how to do this by machine. And um, it's a little fiddly. That's Margaret's word. She's my one of my friends and she 
She says things are fiddly when they're a little bit hard to manage sometimes, but it gets you get to be doing a routine. You get into a routine and it's not hard at all. Okay, and on the last stitch, you'll just tie a little knot. Do your, I like to do two stitches because, and then on your last stitch, just stick your needle through the, through this loop and pull it. And that kind of ties a little knot. And then we'll just cut that off and tie a knot in your thread again. And then we'll go ahead and finish, we'll do another one. I have to lick my finger, sorry. I know it's not politically correct anymore. Anyway, look what it looks like. All of your corners are nice and sharp and our fabric didn't move because of the glue. And we're going to leave it just like this. Now when we get all finished and we're ready to, um, we can sew all these things together, but when we're ready to finish our project, we just, Stick a little something in here, maybe a pair of scissors or something, and this will just pop out. You just kind of got to loosen it a little bit. I know, I'm making it look hard. Okay, see how I just folded those over the edges? And you release that glue. It releases pretty easy. Now it's not going to matter if you have just a little bit of that cardboard on there. You can re you can reuse these, and you should reuse these because they're not cheap. They're not free, really. You know, unless you want to make your own, which you can do. And just pull them off. It'd be a good thing for the kids to do as long as you now I've pulled a little. As long as they're watching what they're doing, but then. Fold it back, take it over to your ironing board, and maybe starch it if you want to, and then just press it flat. And you can see I've hand stitched these together. We're going to do that. It's not hard. It's really simple. You don't have to be a perfectionist to do this. Okay, let's make one more. So here's our, we'll just go ahead and use this. The one that we just pulled out. Little dab of glue. You can use them a few times. You probably don't want to use them. I must have, I just keep leaving the lid open and so it dries out. But if you close the lid, they won't dry out there. Okay. I've put my glue on and then flip it over. Center it so you've got a quarter of an inch all the way around. Fold one side, if you're left-handed, fold the left side. Fold the next side, and you've got a minor, mitered corner. Get your thread, do a stitch, do another stitch. Okay, folded, fold the next corner stitch and stitch and then I like to pull it tight so I know this is you know gonna be flat and nice you can press it if you want to you don't have to and then just two stitches pull it tight fold Now, if it's looking like to you that it's a little loose right in here, don't worry too much about that because we're, when we sew it together, we're going to be, I'll just show you, we're going to be sewing right across the top right here. So I'll do these last two sides and we'll be done with another one. They're that faster, faster. Once you get used to them and do a few, you're going to say, oh my gosh, why was I so afraid of that? It's not hard. Okay, that looks a little sloppy, but you know what? Nobody's going to ever see that, ever, because it's going to be inside of the quilt or the project that we're making. So nobody really is going to care. 
Okay, and then I'll take one more stitch for the knot, but you don't have to, you can, you can cut it off. Okay, there we go. And then trim, just cut that off. Okay, now I've got another needle here and I'm just gonna show you how we sew these together. So we're using these, this color, this um, peachy color for the center and we're gonna sew these hexagons together. So we put them right sides together and then take your needle and just go into the corner of the fabric. Try not to sew through the cardboard. And then if you ever heard of a whip stitch, that's what you're doing is just doing a whip stitch. I've been using kind of a long thread because I um, try to make several at a time. And sometimes you're gonna get a little loop like that. Just try to straighten it out if you can. If you can't, not a big deal. Okay, then just, you can see I am just barely going through the top of that. Not the cardboard, just the fabric. Oops, and it does that too, it catches. Okay, we're, I'm gonna hurry and get this side done and then we're gonna sew another one on so that you can see how we put them together. Hold them tight between your fingers. If, it, if you're more comfortable using shorter thread, then just by all means do. No one's ever going to see this thread. It's on the back of the hexagons. Okay, so right up to the corner. And if you'd like, so just a little, another anchoring stitch in there. All right, and this is what it looks like. You can barely see the little black in there. If you wanna use a neutral color thread or a white thread, that would be fine, not a problem. All right, now I want to add this hexagon to this. So how should I do that? I don't really want to break my thread right now because I have a nice long thread. So I'm going to fold this over. Let's see, my thread's right here. So I'm going to put this right here against the against this um, center piece. And then just start again. Whichever way is more comfortable for you, either sewing towards you or sewing away from you, it's whatever is your comfort, that's what matters. Okay, I hope I'm not too shaky and that you can see what I'm doing. You can cut your thread, you can tie a knot, you can do anything you wanna do because this is your project. Um, I know you're going to appreciate it more than anybody else because you made it and you know the hard work that went into it. But it also just beautifies your home and you can be proud of the things that you're making for your home or for one of your loved ones. Even if it's a coaster, you know, give it a try. What do you have to lose? You can also make this these out of any fabrics that you want. If you want to fussy cut, which most of you know what fussy cutting is, but I will show you in just a minute what I'm talking about and we'll fussy cut one of these um, centers so that you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm just gonna do like an anchoring stitch and maybe tie a knot right here because I want to sew down the other side. Okay, so we have two pieces sewn on. Now, this, it's hard. I'm not gonna say it's hard because it's not hard, but this is stiff. It doesn't really bend, so how am I gonna sew this right here? I am going to encourage it to bend 
just a little and hold these two sides together. Do you see what I mean? I've encouraged that to bend, but I'm not really making a crease in it at all. Now I'll show you that again because I have to tie a knot in my thread. I never learned how to do it the way that a lot of people do it, but this works for me, so we'll do it that way. Okay, so here's the back, here's the front, and we want to sew these two pieces together. So just gently bend this piece here, and then just start sewing again. Make sure you catch both sides though. Oops. And that happens a lot, so that's normal. Especially with a long thread. But with a long thread, you don't have to thread your needle as often. There's no wrong, rate, wrong way to do this. So however it works for you. Don't expect your first few to be perfect. They're not going to be. You're going to, if you don't use glue or another method that secures it really well, you're going to have some slipping and then you're gonna get frustrated. So use the glue to secure it. Okay, and look, it straightens right back out. That's what the back looks like, and that's what the front looks like. So I will go ahead and continue attaching these all the way around right here. But I promised I would show you fussy cutting. So let me get something really cute and we'll fussy cut that for you. I should have mentioned before that these templates are made with little holes right at the quarter inch mark. You can take your friction pen or your pencil, something light so that you're not going to, uh, so it won't show through, which it probably won't anyway. And you can make these little marks right here. And then as you put your, your cardboard paper in there, you'll see right where they need to go. So I am so sorry I missed that, missed showing you that. But you don't have to if you don't want to, or you, you know, just do it at first. Then you fold over, and then you, well, of course you do your glue dots, then you fold over, and then you just start stitching. So as we do this fussy cut block, we're going to use the smaller template, the two inch template. And I've got a piece of, fabric that has some cute little motifs on it. Um, I want to put one of these right in the center of my hexagon. How about that red one right there? I think that's kind of cute. So now I'm going to use my 28 millimeter cutter and just fussy cut around it. It's a lot easier to use than like a 45 or a 60. I will turn this as I go or get your rotating mat. Make sure that it stays lined up. That moved a titch, but not too bad. And then line that all back up. And one more. All right, you caught me. I have to turn it. Don't reach across, you'll cut yourself, I promise. I've done it. Okay, and there's a lot more that we can fussy cut out of this. So, there you go. Isn't that cute? So now I'm going to use one of the two inch hexagons papers 
and just do the very same thing, only just a titch, just a little dab. A titch must be, you know, close between a smidge and a, I don't know what. Okay. It's a term we use, huh? All right, so I'm going to turn this over and just kind of center it right on there. And like I said before, this hole is to help you punch this out in the end after you're all finished. And then get your needle ready. Fold the first side, then fold the next side. And you know what I didn't do is I didn't mark with my template. Let's do that. And what it ends up doing is showing you right where you need to put your template. We'll see how close I came. Um, I could go over a little bit, couldn't it? We'll see if this glue is still wet enough. Yep, see how it comes right off? All right, we'll move that template right like that. Okay, and then fold, fold, stitch, stitch. Just remember, fold, fold, stitch, stitch. That's all you gotta do. Well, it would help if you tied a knot in the thread too. I know I'm probably driving some of you crazy with the licking of my finger, but it's the way I know. Okay, two stitches. Fold, fold, stitch, and stitch. And then fold again, fold again, and two stitches. I'm going to finish this up and use these cute little beehive fabrics and make a, a flower. And I'll bring you right back and show you how cute it turns out. I'm going to show you how to cut your fat quarter into hexagons. It's right here in our instructions that we've been given in our subscription boxes and we'll talk more about that later but we're going to use our little template and figure out how tall they are so let's see it looks like they are two and one half inches which we knew because it says right there so what we do is take our um, fat quarter and we're going to cut strips that are two and a half inches by the length of or the width of the of the fat quarter sorry I think and then I can't talk so we're going to go ahead and cut those and we'll go ahead and use our ruler we want to do, cut them at two and a half inches all the way across and then I'm just gonna keep cutting whoops um, this is for the table runner that we're making and you can make 49 two and a half inch hexagons from one fat quarter and then this one pop it open and make sure that it is two and one half inches and it is closer to three. So we'll just go ahead and cut that off. Okay. Now from these strips right here, I'll take one for example we're going to be putting our hexagon on here. And then just cutting right across like this and this. And if you have 
if you have a rotating mat, you know, use it because it's very handy. So there's two hexagons right there. And then we'll continue on cutting them until we get all 49 cut. We're going to need for the table runner 48 of this color, this color right here. So we'll go ahead and get started on those. And um, I've already got my bigger hexagons done and I'll lay it out and show you. And then there's different ways to do the background, the backing of this table runner. We can do the multicolored one right here where we're using leftover fat quarters, less leftover pieces from our fat quarters, or we can just do these hexagons around our um, little flowers. So I've got a few done and we'll lay them out right here. You can do any of these that you like. You don't have to um, do the same ones. Looks, I took I took the cardboard out of that one. I'm just going to go ahead and press it once. But now I need to take these and connect them to our hexagons, to to our flowers. Sorry. So I'll go ahead and do that. And it will take a little bit of time, but that's the thing with hexagons. They do take a little bit of time. And um, I'll go ahead and put these all the way around it, around our flowers. You can kind of see how it's going to turn out. There's three in between them. Actually, I have them kind of turned, don't I? There's three in between. And you'll see they just fit right like that. And then each one, just one layer around. is. You have to do to get them to be connected now if all you want to do is a placemat you're good if you want to go ahead with the table runner which I'm going to do I'm just going to keep going and then when we get done and these are all together we'll sew it onto this background right here I'm back and I've taken some time and finished my piecing on my hexagons for my table runner. So now we're going to create this part of the table runner right here. So I've, uh, using the pattern, I've pieced this part right here, which is um, two pieces on each, each end and then wider pieces down the center. And then what we're going to do is put this really pretty hexagon unit right on top of it and sew it down. But first I have to remove all of the papers that are here. So I'm gonna start doing that. And I found it was a little bit easier to use just a little scissor and don't cut your threads. You don't wanna do that. But I just kind of popped out a corner and then just, depending on how much glue you you use is how much trouble you're going to have getting these undone. If you use a tiny, tiny amount, then these little hexagon papers will come out fast and easy and you'll be able to reuse them. Now see, that wasn't bad, but it did get torn a little bit. So I might not use that one again, but you just pop it out of one corner and then just 
carefully stick your finger under there and remove it without without cutting your threads. And see, that's just in good shape, so I can use that one again. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo all of these and then meet you back here and we'll sew it down. So I've unpicked all of my um, backing and gotten all of my templates out. And a lot of these are still reusable. So I'm gonna keep those. And there might be just a little bit of residue on there left over from the glue and the papers. And you can just kind of scratch that off or get it a little moist with your um, steam iron. And then you can just pick those off if they bother you. Then I'm just going to lay it out on this backing that I have made and even it up between the two ends. Then I'd like to put a piece of batting underneath it and then just pin baste it. Um, then I'm gonna go around and just sew right along the edges and I'll show you in this right here, I made this too over the weekend and I used the two and a half inch hexagons. The pattern calls for the two inch hexagons but this one turned out just fine. And what I did with this one was I I got these all of these together and sewed them all together and laid them onto the backing. Then I layered the batting and the back of the fabric and I quilted. I just using a straight stitch went around the edges all the way around and then I quilted in between each of these. And that's what the back looks like. It's really turned out pretty good. And then I made this pillow and it's kind of fluffy. I put a little bit too much batting in it because I didn't have a pillow form. But what I did with this was the very same thing. I got all of my hexagons sewn together, laid them on the back background. And then with this one, I don't know if you can see, I used a blanket stitch and went around. And then with my quilting, so you back up a little. I quilted around the hexagon in the center and then from corner to corner, dot to dot, just making three passes. And then I went ahead and made my pillow just using the, the um, instructions. And I just pinned this together because I've got to take it out and make my pillow a little skinnier. But I think it turned out so cute. Okay. Now I'm gonna get the other things that I need and layer it out and then we'll go to the sewing machine and I'll show you how to sew it. So here's what I've done. I put my backing and my batting and then my fabric and I've used something called spray Baste. It's a quilt, it's for your quilts and just spray it on. Make sure you do it in a well ventilated area because it does have quite an odor and it is so sticky. And then I've laid my hexagons on there and just pressed them down. And you can see it holds it pretty well. And then the same on this end as well. And then you can take it over to the sewing machine right then and start doing your, your quilting or your basting. And so I'm gonna move the camera and we'll do that. I like the way it looks to just do a straight stitch. So I'm just going to straight stitch along, right along the edge and just stop and pivot. You're going to be twisting and turning a lot your fabric, not you. And it may be a little awkward, but when you when you get your um, table runner and it's it's getting quite bulky, just roll it up like this and stick it right inside the um, what is this called? The arm, I guess, of the machine. Actually, doesn't have to go all that far, but. I just wanted to show you how to do that. So if it gets in your way, roll it up so that it's not in your way. And 
And if you want to at the same time, you can just turn it and go ahead and sew any way you'd like to, to quilt your quilt or to quilt your um, table runner. Actually, it is a quilt. It's a quilt sandwich, so that makes it a quilt. But it's not as hard as you might think. So I'm going to go ahead and, and work on this, and I'll show you when it's all done. So here's what I ended up doing. I went from here across to the edge of the center block all the way around and it makes a little star right here in the center. It's really cute. Now I think I'm going to just do some straight line sewing for the borders and see how it turns out. go all quilted now we just need to bind it and let's see what the back looks like pretty good have to snip some threads but pretty good okay now we're ready to bind that and then I want to show you how to make a cute little um Mug rug. It'll be fun. The first thing I'm going to do is I've picked out six hexagons to go around the center. And I've picked out the center. And now I'm taking my template and laying it right on the hexagon. And I'm not using... A friction pen I'm using a permanent pen and I don't recommend you do this but I wanted you to be able to see the dots so put your pen you're going to probably need like a fine point pen or a really sharp pencil to be able to mark and do this for a while at first so that you can get used to using this mark it's it's not hard it's intimidating is all it is but you know, anything's intimidating when you first try it, right? So what we're going to do is match up two sides. Then we're going to sew just straight down a quarter inch seam. And I don't have my quarter inch foot on, but it'll work okay, I think. That's the easy part, just sew one seam down, all the way down. Okay, and then we're going to open it, and then this is where it gets a little tricky, but not bad, I promise. Okay, take your petals to your flower and put it right on top of the other petal. And now, I like to use a pen, especially at first, and you're going to want to pin or put a pin right here at the bottom where where your dot is and that's where you're going to stop sewing so start sewing right at the edge and sew right to where that pin dot is or the dot where the pin is and stop whoops and stop ha <laughs> okay so I did go over a stitch, but I think we'll be okay. We can always take that stitch out if we want to. Anyway, and then you're going to open that and turn it just a little bit 
so that your center of your petal and or the center and the petal align. I'll show you again. Okay, you've got the first one sewn on and the second one you've sewn right to here. Now just kind of give it a little twist and turn and look how nice that lays. You're going to sew right from here right to the seam line. So we'll do that. And I slowed my machine down just a little bit so I didn't get in a hurry. Um, another thing is if you have a needle down, you might want to use it. And then just pull this petal out of your way so that it doesn't get caught in the seam. Oh, I keep forgetting to stop. Okay, there. So that's because I sewed over it just a stitch or two, but it looks pretty good. Okay, now we're going to put on another petal. You'll sew right from the out, from the top, the outside, right down to where the red dot is, right here, or to where the seam is, whichever's closer to the seam. So. Just pay attention to where you're at and make sure that you're not overlapping. And try to hit that stop button faster than I do. Okay, so it's right to the seam. Now, flip it open, give it a little twist, and there you go. Now, so from this seam to here, we want to make sure that this is out of the way, so I'll just pull it back and sew from your seam right all the way to the outside. The first one will be the hardest. After that, you'll be, oh, I get it. Okay. There you go, that one's on. You've got three petals on. So let's keep going. Here's another one. All the way down to where the dot is or the seam is. And I like to put a little bit of a pin sometimes right there just to make sure I don't go over. And you can see it's right on the seam line on the back. My machine likes to take that one extra stitch before it back goes backward. So I just took that out. Okay, and then we're going to turn, just turn like this and sew from the top right down to the seam line again, making sure that this is out of your way this last petal. And because these were cut by hand, they're probably not precise, but just do the best you can. Okay, so there and there, looking pretty good. There's a little bit of loose threads right there. But when we go back and we quilt it, they're not going to show. Okay, two more will be done with this flower. Okay, so right down toward the seam. You may not be right on the dot, but you should be really close to it. And there's your seam. So I might have been able to take one more stitch, but go ahead and turn.
and reposition this out of your way and it helps to, it to kind of nest in there pretty well and then we'll just sew another And if, if, as you feel with your fingers, make sure everything's out of your way so you don't get a catch. Okay, and then one more. So from seam to seam on the last petal, looks like it's kind of off center. There we go. I want to make sure this is out of the way so we don't catch it. Okay, and then there's just one last seam and it's this one right here. You may want to lower your uh, or decrease your stitch length. I think that would probably help me out a lot. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Well, it would, might be beneficial to pin, I think. Okay, there's your hexagon. I'm gonna press that real quick and show you what it looks like. When you press, just press your seams clockwise and your outer seams or your center, your center block seams can go toward the outside or they can go toward the inside just it might be easier for them to be pressed out and then press the seams clockwise that helps make your hexagon flower lay flat when you do that and it looks pretty good i could use some practice I hope you all had the chance to make some hexagons today and try both by machine and by hand and i wanted to show you just one more little project um, how to make a mug rug. If you can't tolerate doing a big project, do something small like this. Remember we fussy cut the center of this. We made this hexagon and then I just glued it to this piece of fabric and sewed around it and then I put it back on it and just did a little quilting and binding and it turned out really cute. It's really simple to make a fun gift to give someone with maybe a little mug and you can roll it up and stick it inside. There's so many fun things you can do and so many creative ways that you can use these hexagons. Mm -hmm. So give them a try and let us know how you enjoyed it and tell me what you think. Did you have fun doing it? Did you not have fun doing it? Leave a comment below and like and subscribe to my channel. It always helps us out. We are going to be having a big giveaway when we reach 6,000 subscribers. And we're only a couple hundred away from that. So get your friends to like and subscribe and you do the same. And come back really soon. I'm going to be making another project from our February subscription box. It's a beautiful quilt. So check back in soon. And I will see you next time.